the marketplace thinks it is whether to cut 25, 50, or 75 in September. That is, that is what the marketplace thinks. I would bring you to the end of this month and Jackson Hole. Um, he has a golden opportunity to regain control of the policy narrative. And to do that, he has to take some risk in laying out what he thinks the neutral interest rate is, in discussing, like the Bank of England has discussed, what structural changes are happening to the domestic economy and to the global right. economy. So for me, his T decision is actually at Jackson Hole, whether he just gives yeah. a mail-in speech or whether he tries to regain control of the policy narrative. Well, and Mohammed, we're going to get the surveillance golf stream out to get you to Jackson Hole for our coverage. Lisa Bramwitz and I will be at Jackson Hole. Wonderful. With that said, Mohammed, the heart of the matter is you mentioned BOE and particularly Lagarde's ECB, and she gave a speech last year at Jackson, excuse me, she wrote a paper last year at Jackson Hole on this. Mohammed, we're addicted. We're, we're in a Greenspanian measured cadence. Does that fit the events right now? Or does Powell have to elucidate at Jackson Hole that we can lose measured and be more ad hoc, more unmeasured in our policy? So it's really interesting because I think the Fed being so excessively data dependent has been actually quite ad hoc. Um, the amount of pivots in the forward guidance we've had over the last 12 months is enormous. You know, I, I actually have a slide that shows every pivot. And that's a problem because if you allow data to swing you so much, then you become an amplifier of market volatility rather than a stabilizer. So I think they need to be less ad hoc, less so data dependent, and, and, and have the courage to be strategic, have a courage to, to say, this is where we think the economy is going. I understand why they're not doing that. They tried it in 2021 with the famous transitory inflation call. They made a horrible mistake. And because of that, they've shied away. But that's what a central bank is supposed to do. That is what Greenspan did. That is what Bernanke did. That is what Yellen did. And I think it's important for this Fed to be not just data dependent, but also to have a forward looking view of the economy. That's a that's a great point, Mohammed, because a lot of folks that we speak to both in academia and in practice say they're not looking at the right data. They're not looking at the real time data. If they were looking at the real time data, they would realize that the economy is, in fact, slowing, that inflation is, in fact, under control and that they should be cutting rates right now. Do you go that far? Yeah, that's where I was. I called for, for, for a cut last week. Yep. I've been arguing for the last three months that the U.S. economy is slowing much faster than most people anticipate. Why? Because in addition to the data, I've been listening to the companies. I've been listening to what they, they're telling us about what they're seeing in terms of demand. They should have cut in July. They didn't. That was a mistake. Um, they, can, they can still regain control of the narrative but it is doing some really hard work that they need to do and having the courage to share it with the rest of us.